Welcome to part 3 of the BomberPage.com video review of the ECS Elite Group A785GM-M Micro ATX Motherboard. As we begin, this is our test system. It consists of a cheap ASA case, an OCZ Game Extreme 700 watt non-modular power supply, a Zalman 9500A copper heatsink, 4GB of ADATA 1600 megahertz gaming memory, a Seagate 7200.12 500GB 16MB cache hard drive, and a Samsung optical drive. Overall, opti the audible noise of this system is very low, as the only running fans are the CPU fan and the power supply fan, as well as the case fan. The motherboard itself is a totally passive cooling design, and is very suitable for use in uh, setups such as a home theater PC. As we move on into the BIOS, we have standard CMOS setup, advanced setup menu, advanced chipset setup, integrated peripherals, power management setup, PCI and PNP setup, PC health, and the MIB2 motherboard intelligent BIOS where you can set memory or overclocking settings. Standard CMOS settings are just the standard date, time, and hard drive configuration options. Advanced setup has the AMD cool and quiet, C1E enhanced halt state, the quick power on self test mode, boot up non lock status, APIC mode, boot device order, the boot other device, and the eJiffy function. Moving to advanced chipset setup, we have internal graphics. You can set those to enabled or disabled. You can change the clock of the integrated uh, GPU itself. You can change the integrated frame buffer that is shared with the main system memory. Initial di display first, memory hole remapping, HDMI audio output, and the unganged mode for memory. On integrated peripherals, we have the onboard IDE controller. Onboard S serial ATA mode, you can set that to enabled or disabled. And on the S serial ATA configuration, you have the choices between IDE, RAID, and AHCI. On this system, it is set to IDE mode as we are running a single hard drive. The onboard audio can be enabled or disabled, helpful if you decide to use a discrete audio card. Onboard Ethernet connectors, again, if you choose not to use the onboard Ethernet and care to uh, utilize a better uh, network chipset, such as the Intel cards, you can disable the onboard. You can uh, disable or enable the onboard 1394 firewire connections. USB can be enabled or disabled. Legacy USB connections as well as the serial ATA controller mode. Power management are just the standard power saving setup, suspend type, power on after power fail, and resume options. Here, basically, one option. PC health status allows monitoring of CPU, Northbridge, and system temperature as well as voltage monitoring. The, this here is the main chunk that our review will focus upon. This is the MIB2 options menu. We have memory configuration. We will go ahead and head into that now. 
For the DRAM frequency, you have the options of manual, limit, or auto. Limit will automatically set a memory multiplier so that it will not exceed 800 megahertz, 667 megahertz, 533 megahertz, or 400 megahertz. Please bear in mind that these are DDR speeds, which the effective memory rate is double this. You can change the DRAM timings between modes. You can enable or disable bank interleaving as well as the channel interleaving. You're able to change the hypertransfer frequency of the board. These are very helpful if you decide to overclock where and the board cannot support a high HT frequency. This is the CPU reference clock. This combined with your with your CPU multiplier determines your final speed of your CPU. Currently, this is set to 234. Stock for these processors is 200, so this results in a 17% overclock, which was due to running the stock CPU heatsink fan and we have not really delved into too much overclocking with this system yet. You have the auto detect, dim, and PCI clock, as well as enable or disable spread spectrum. This you would want to disable when you are overclocking. You have options for changing the CPU voltage all the way up to plus, one point, plus 0 0.165 volts. Memory voltages can be set up to plus 630 millivolts or 0 0.630. The north bridge can be set up to plus 315 millivolts or 0 0.315 volts. And the south bridge voltage can be changed all the way up to 1.35 volts. This concludes the BIOS section of this video. Please stay tuned for part 4 where we, where we will benchmark the onboard graphics as well as other features of this board.